Hey guys, Giggity DFS back again with another video. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the MLB slate for 105 on Sunday, August 9th. And we actually have some good pitching on it. I'm actually quite excited to go over it. Um, but before we do, just some housekeeping. If you guys have not checked out TiltedDFS.com, link will be in the description below. Got some really good articles in CSGO, MLB, NBA, NHL, NFL, golf, MMA, all that good stuff. Go ahead, check them out in the description below. Um, also, I want to go and look back at last night's MLB slate, which I was actually quite happy with. Um, I ended up finishing in 301st out of 15,000 um, with the picks that I I want to show you guys that I am using the picks that I tell you. Went with the Mets 5 stack. Uh, Lonzo had a homer. Um, McNeil and Rosario, 7 each. Davis and Conforto each homered. And then I also went with a Twins 2. Garver, unfortunately, didn't do anything. So that kind of sucked. Um, and then Kepler got a homer, which was nice. And then I had a one-off of a $2,300 Lopez. 3% owned. He hit a dong. Really, really nice. I uh, went with David Peterson. Um, he was all right. 13 points. And then the biggest bust of the day was Clayton Kershaw. Yikes. Uh, went four and a third. Uh, four runs. A walk. Seven hits. Only six strikeouts. Nine points. Wasn't that good. But uh, we did... Cash quite nicely, uh, forty dollars spot. Can't really complain, and we get to go on to the next one, um, which is a eight gamer. It's going to start at one oh five. One thing that they did mention: this Atlanta and Philadelphia game is going to be a double header, um, so it's only going to be using game one from it, I believe. Yeah, only game one from it, and this one's going to be a seven inning game. Which is interesting because it it's definitely I like some spots in this game. Well, uh, well, let's go ahead and just jump right into the slate. Um, Philadelphia, Atlanta. Uh, you got Haskar Yanoi, you know, for Atlanta. I'm making his major league debut. I've never seen that name before. Uh, at 7100, and then you got. Vince Velasquez going for the Phillies at 6,500. Uh, another one of those money pits that we like to throw at and um, hope something sticks. Um, not really going to be getting to him tomorrow. Even with this being a seven inning game, I am intrigued of going to offense. Going after uh, Atlanta's offense actually might be a high leverage spot. Guaranteed, these two teams are not going to be high-owned. Because people are going to see that they're only going to go seven innings, and they're going to go, okay, don't want to get to them. So, if you wanted to get to these teams as a leverage spot, that's pretty much the only way you're going to get to them. Going after Azuna, Swanson, Freeman, uh, uh, Acuna, sorry, Swanson, Freeman, and Azuna would be the way to go from the Atlanta side. Um, and for the Philly side, um... Robles, Harper, Gregorius, maybe Bruce. Um, for that, not really going to be interested in any pitchers. But if you are, because it is only a seven-inning game, there is a chance that if these pitchers are pitching good, they might be able to go all seven innings, and it would count as a complete game. We saw that um, when on the opening night of baseball when the Yankee – and national game did not go the distance. Both Garrett Cole and Max Scherzer both got complete games. So uh, you could possibly so see something like that out of it. So there could be upside for uh, pitching in this one, but I'm personally not going to it. I think there's better spots on the slate. Next one is the Yankees in Tampa against the Rays. You got Charlie Morton at 9,100. For the uh, Rays, and you got James Paxton at 8,600 for the Yankees. And I feel like this is going to be one that I'd rather get to 
hitting. Um, I have certain pitchers that I'm interested in, um, but going after a, I, I like Tampa Bay, and the main reason why I like Tampa Bay is they are a cheap stack minus Meadows. Now Meadows is 5K. Everybody else is $4,300 or cheaper. By doing that, it's going to allow you to pay up for some better pitching on the slate, which you have in Jacob Degrom. Uh, also on the slate is Jose Barrios, Lance Lynn, and Sony Gray, all above $9,400. So going after a cheap stack like the Tampa Bay Rays could be your way of getting to one or two of those pitchers. I do like Diaz, even though, and then even though Metis is expensive. If you want to get to him, cool. If you want to skip over him because he is expensive, that's fine. Uh, Diaz, Martinez, Renfro, and uh, Bursa and Lowe are going to be the way to go. They're going to be cheap, and they're going to be a decent stack, and I have a feeling that this game is going to be a little bit more offensive than it will be for pitching. Uh, on the Yankee side, once again, the Yankees are always expensive. Um, there is no really getting away from it. Sanchez is 4,400. LeMahieu is 4,700. Uh, you got Torres at 4,500. Judge at 6K stands out. So you possibly could find some value tomorrow uh, in that one, which would probably be Trunchman. Trunchman is $3,300 if he starts. I like that as a one-off. He is going to be a little bit chalky if he does start, but getting to Trunchman might be a way to to get to a nice value play. Uh, don't mind going after Judge, Hicks, Torres, Viot. If you're not interested, if you have more of a mid-range pitcher's options, if you do like any of those over the higher range. Personally, I like going after the higher range on this slate. And one of those is going to be coming from the next game. Miami, Marlins, and the New York Mets. New York Mets have... Jacob DeGrom starting at 11,600, which I feel like is going to be a spot that I really want to get to. Um, I always want to play Jacob DeGrom when he's starting. It's kind of hard to get away from him. And he's cheaper than he was the last time he pitched, uh, which the last time he pitched... Oh, no, he was 11-6 last time, and he was 12K against Boston. And I would be willing to pay 12k for him on this slate as well. He's going up against Miami. Miami's not the strongest hitting team. Yes, they've scored uh, what five? No, they scored four and they scored four runs the last two games. But those were against mediocre pitching. I don't mind going after uh, Jacob Degrom, 11-6, strong spot. If you're going after anybody from uh, the Marlins, Dickerson, other than that, not really too interested in the Marlins. Uh, on the mound for the Marlins, you got Pablo Lopez, which is at 7K, not really too interested in him. Going back to a Mets stack tomorrow is is going to be a viable option. Going, after, going back after Nimmo, McNeil, Alonzo, Conforto, Davis, with the last three of those that I mentioned homering last night, I, I like going back to a Mets stack. Uh, they've done well against Miami. They're strong. Miami lets up a lot of home runs. Um, Lopez has a fly ball rate of about 30%, so I like going after the Mets hitters tomorrow. And it's just going to be a, another slate where they're not going to be super high owned, and they're not that expensive. Uh, Alonso is 45. McNeil is 4K. J.D. Davis is 3,600. Um, Nimmo's 31. Conforto's 37. They haven't really priced him up, and I don't mind going after another Mets stack tomorrow because it could allow you to get to a better pitching core, which is going to be important in this slate. Next game we got is Detroit at Pittsburgh. Um, you got... Turnbull going for Detroit at 8K, and you got Stephen Brault going for the Pirates at 6,400. I'll say that Stephen uh, Spencer's Turnbull is going to be one of my mid-range pitchers that I do like tomorrow. Going up against a Pirates team that is not that strong. Yes, I mentioned earlier in the weekend 
when Detroit and Pittsburgh was playing each other, and then I mentioned, yeah, the only one I liked was Boyd, I think, was the pitcher. And then um, the teams went off for a football score of 17-13, so can't really predict that. But once again, I'm going to probably be making the same statement. I like Sir, I, I like Turnbull as a mid-range pitcher. I'm all right with getting to him. Um, the only one that I'm really interested in going after for Pittsburgh is Bell, like usual. Uh, Pittsburgh's not really that strong of a stack. Uh, they are cheap, but I, there's other viable options on the slate. Brault I'm not interested in because he's more of a opener. Um, he start. He pitched as the long reliever. Um, two days ago, on the football score day, he went no innings, let up three hits, four runs, all earned, and three walks, negative 11 points. And I think it's he's going to get stomped on again, I think. So if you wanted to go after some Detroit players, uh, going after Goodrum, Sh- uh, Scroop, Cabrera, Crone, they're going to be cheap, so it's going to be a viable stack for tomorrow. Uh, Crone's 31, Shroop's 32. Going after Detroit will allow you to get to the higher pitchers, which, once again, I do like going after cheap stacks tomorrow so I can get to the Jacob deGroms and the Jose Barrios and Lance Lins of tomorrow. And I, I feel like Detroit's going to be a solid stack again. So, going after Detroit, it's going to be a, a good spot for me. Next up, we got Toronto at Fenway against the Red Sox. Uh, you got Matt Shoemaker on the mound at $7,200 for the Toronto Blue Jays. Nathan Eovaldi for Boston at 6600 And this is going to be another game where I don't mind getting to some offense over defense. Um... Not really interested in Nathan Eovaldi. Not really interested in Shoemaker. They're probably not going to go that far. The offenses on this slate are actually quite decent um, for these two teams. Uh, I'd, if I was going to stack one of these, uh, I'd rather get to Toronto. I'd rather get to Toronto just because they're a tiny, tiny bit cheaper. Other than that, both of them are going to be decent stacks for tomorrow. Maybe pa- pairing them up, one of these up with Detroit and then going after two big pitchers. Don't mind going after Bingio, Bichette, Shaw, and Hernandez for this one. Um, for the Toronto side and for the Boston side, um, Devers, Martinez, Bogarts, Moreland, and uh, Benintendi. For on that side, not really interested in the pitching once again. Rather pay up for pitching tonight or tomorrow during the day, um, and should it should be able to pay off for you. Moving on to Minnesota and Kansas City, um, you got Barrios going for the Minnesota Twins at ten thousand flat. You got Brandy Singer going for Kansas City at sixty seven hundred. I'm all right with going to Barrios at 10K. I'd rather pay down a tiny bit and get to Lance Lynn or Sony Gray. Lance Lynn, preferably, against the Angels. Um, but I don't mind getting to Barrios. He's going to probably not be super high owned. Uh, Kansas City has been has been hitting very, very well lately. So I think it would be a little bit better to go to the Kansas City hitting in this one. Um, don't mind getting to Merrifield, Soler, Perez, and O'Hearn. Even Mondesi if you wanted to get down to a five-man stack. Um, Kansas City has been starting to hit better lately, so maybe they might be able to t- uh, bring it on to this game and have a solid game against Jose Barrios. I'm not saying I'm, going to, I'm personally going to go stack Kansas City, but I don't mind getting to them. I'd rather get to the Minnesota stack in this one going up against Singer. Uh... Not really interested in Singer. Minnesota's offense is a little bit too strong for him, uh, and I feel like I'd rather get to Minnesota. Kepler, Polanco, Cruz, Rosario, and Sano is going to be the spots that I'd rather get to than Singer. Uh, Minnesota is a decent stack for tomorrow, though. 
What else do we got? We got two games left. We got the Cincinnati game and we got the uh, uh, LA game. This one, if you want to get to another solid mid-range mid option, uh, Brandon Woodruff for Milwaukee at 8,200 is going to be a solid choice. Strikes out about 30% of his batters. Uh, and then you also had Sony Gray going for Cincinnati at 9,400. Uh, Woodruff is actually a solid choice for tomorrow. Um, Cincinnati has not been hitting the way that we expected them to. Uh, they are off to a slow start. I don't mind going again, uh, going for Woodruff going against them. Um, just a solid choice at 8,200, and he has been pitching quite well to begin the year. He's pitched um, two times on main slates. Uh, six innings and six and a third. Uh, most he let up was two earned runs, which one of them was on a homer. Um, oh, yeah, both of them were on a homer. He had 37 points and 16 points. Uh, and he's probably going to be a solid choice for a pay down spot for pitching tonight, uh, t for today's slate. Um, so going after him is, is going to be a decent idea for me. Um, if you, oh, sorry. Cincinnati hitters. If you're going to get to any, Cast, uh, Castellanos, Vado, and Suarez. That's pretty much about it for them. Um, I'd honestly rather go after Milwaukee hitting against Sony Gray. I feel like that could be a decent contrarian play tomorrow. Going after, go, going after Hiroa, Yelich, and Morrison might be a better play for me personally. Uh, getting to them as a secondary stack, nothing crazy. Um... Going up against Sonny Gray. Sonny Gray is going to be mehly owned. Um, he's not going to be chalk, but he's not going to be under owned. He should be around 10 to 15 percent owned tomorrow. So, if you do want to go after him, that's also a solid choice. Final game of the day, and for this one, we got uh, Andrew Henny going for the. LA Angels at 7,800, and then Lance Lynn at 9,700 for the Texas Rangers. Lance Lynn has been probably one of the best pitchers in baseball to begin the season. Um, he is 1-0. Uh, he threw 18 innings. He has a .49 ERA, which means he's, which he's only allowed one earned run, which was on a home run, so one bad pitch. Um, and he, for the first three games, he had seven, eight, and nine strikeouts, and obviously no pitch limit for him. He's pitched 107, 102, and 108 pitches, so I don't mind going after Lance Lynn tomorrow at 9,700. Pay down for some stacks, pay up for Lance Lynn, don't mind getting to him. And then Henny at, uh, 7,800 is also not a bad option. I do like getting to him as a pay down option as well. I'd like going to Woodruff a little bit more, but Henny, who strikes out 28% of his batters, going against a Rangers team that strikes out a decent amount, don't mind going after Henny as well. Um, if you're going after some Texas hitting, uh, Kenner Fialfa um, is going to be a cheap option. He's probably going to be hitting up in the lineup. Obviously, check the lineups before lock. They should have all of them out before the 1 o'clock lock tomorrow. Uh, if he is batting first or second, don't mind getting to him. He's pretty cheap. At, where is he at? Uh, $3,200. Don't mind getting to him. Don't mind getting to Todd Frazier, Gallo, and Odor on the Texas side. And for the Angels, getting to the usual suspects of Trout. Oshai Otani, Rendon, and La Sala. Uh, but I'd rather get to Lance Lynn tomorrow on the Texas side. That's going to do it for this video. Um, hopefully, you, most people were able to watch this before it does lock up. Uh, this should be posted around 8 a.m. on this morning. Uh, so, good luck tonight, uh, today. Let me know how you guys did in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe, check out Tilted TFS, all stuff in the description below. And uh, good luck tomorrow, and let's, let's make some money.